In this video, we'll talk about the process of Wallerian degeneration. Wallerian degeneration is also known as injury induced neurodegeneration. And it is defined by the degeneration of the axon uh, in the distal site of the nerve injury. It is further characterized by disintegration of cytoskeleton underlying the axon, mitochondrial swelling, and axon fragmentation. This phenomena was initially reported by Augustus Waller and based on his name, it was known as Wallerian degeneration. It was discovered 1850, but until 20th century, scientists have a deeper understanding about the molecular mechanism. So in this video, we'll talk about the molecular mechanism. But before that, let me tell you, we all experience some sort of nerve injury. Sometimes maybe you are compressing your nerves by slipping on your hands and you all felt that tingling sensation on your nerve and this is due to compression. This is a most mild form of injury. Sometimes injury is more serious like let's say somebody fell badly in, from, in a bike accident and in that case there could be a severing of a part of their motor axon let's say. So that could be a more severe form of injury. So in case of severe nerve injury the region which is distal to the injury site can disintegrate over time and that's the overall principle of Wallerian degeneration. Any injury or disintegration of the nerve fibers in the distal site of injury site. So question is what really happens in the Wallerian degeneration? How these axons are disintegrating? What goes wrong? Is it simple new programmed cell death or it is different from the programmed cell death. An insight came from a mouse mutant known as WLDS or Valerian degeneration slow. In normal circumstances after the injury the distal site of the injury site will eventually be disintegrated and the entire neuron would die in some days. But in Valerian degeneration slow mutant the entire process of degeneration is much slower. Note that the degeneration happens, but at a so slower time scale. Scientists wondered what really happens in this mouse mutant that makes this uh, degeneration slow. Imagine in this way, that if scientists understand what makes the process slower in this mutant, they can devise any therapeutic target or drug to slow down this kind of injury process. But before understanding that, we have to understand what is so special about the basically world S mouse. So basically, there is an important cellular process that we have to understand. The cell soma of any neuron produce an enzyme known as NMNAT2. This enzyme catalyzes the conversion of NMN or nicotinamide mononucleotide into NAD and it happens via a series of biochemical reaction. So we are just simply saying this is a transferase enzyme that converts NMN to NAD. This process is important because NAD is required in ETC. It would be required to produce ATP. So from a neuronal functionality point of view, this NAD generation is super important. NMNAT2 is very short-lived enzyme. That means it has to be produced continuously by the cell body and can have to be transported to the axons. So this tra axonal transport of soma-derived NMNAT2 is super important for neuronal functionality. Now imagine a situation when there is an injury in the axon. The NMNAT2 cannot reach the synaptic terminal because already there is a path break, right? So in the synaptic terminal, there would be no conversion of NMN into NAD. And these kind of cellular deprivation of NAD would lead to several problems from an energy point of view. Not only NAD is reduced, but the overall cytosolic concentration of NMN is increased. Both these things might lead to changes. So it turns out that NMN buildup is actually toxic for the neurons. Because in wild ace, it has been shown that there is a... So what is wild ace actually? In retrospect, let me tell you, wild ace is one of the stably axonal targeted NMNAT2 enzyme. So this enzyme is 
more targeted towards the axon in this particular mutant. That means even if there is a degeneration, since these uh, wild proteins are more targeted toward the axon, even after degeneration, there is significant amount of NMN82 present in the axonal terminal. That can still lead to the NAD biogenesis. So, this is the normal scenario. This is the wildest scenario. And scientists also have blocked specific pathways that lead to the biosynthesis of NMN. And they found out that the axonal degeneration is also slower. That means NMN is the main culprit. If NMN accumulates in the neuron or somehow there is an overall increase in the cytosolic concentration of NMN, that might lead to several problems or that might aggravate the process of degeneration. Because in a mutant where NMN could not build up quickly or in a pharmacological scenario when you block the NMN biosynthesis, both the cases there is a protection against this neurodegeneration or valerian degeneration. So that brings out the important role of NMN in uh, axonal degeneration process. Now there is another molecule which works in coordination with NMN82 pathway. So this particular molecule is known as SARM1. This molecule is a immune uh, molecule and it has, a, it has involvement in the interleukin signaling pathway. So it has been shown that SARM1 mutants, just like the wildest mutant, shows a slow degeneration kinetics. That means somehow these mutant phenocopies the wildest mutants. So question is why the slow degeneration is happening? In retrospect, lot of uh, pathways and molecular interaction tells us the overall scenario. So it turns out that either NMN82 degeneration can happen. So the NMN82 can be degraded quickly. The delivery of NMN82 can be disrupted due to, a, due to a loss in the axon. There could be rapid turnover of NMN82 due to MAPK pathway. All these signal, all these three events lead to loss of the enzyme NMN82. Now, once this enzyme is lost, we can completely understand NMN would build up because the conversion of NMN to NAD doesn't happen when the enzyme is not there. And scientist has pinpointed that NMN uh, accumulation or elevation in the neurons are toxic. This would actually lead to SARM1 activation in a mechanism which is not fully understood. But SARM1 works like an executor caspase. It's important to note that the valerian degeneration actually kills the neuron, but it's not exactly like a apoptosis pathway. Anyway, SARM1 activation further changes the calcium level in the neurons. When the calcium levels are elevated, it leads to calpin activation and lead to the damage of the neurons. And this is how the valerian degeneration takes place. So you understood the overall mechanism that are uh, involved in the valerian degeneration process. Two important components are NMN82 and the SARM1. SARM1 is the executor molecule in this entire degeneration process. Now let's see why it is important clinically. It turns out that NMN82 protein and mRNA levels are reduced in the brain of Alzheimer patient. And think about this way, Alzheimer patient has increased susceptibility to neurodegeneration. So overall, NMN82 and NMN concentration in neurons are kind of implicated with neurodegenerative scenarios like Alzheimer disease. So genome-wide association studies has pointed out SARM1 locus is associated with ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis where the motor neurons degenerate. Also, other diseases like fetal echinacea uh, deformation syndrome, in this case, NMN82 loss of function situation has been identified. So somehow we can understand several neurodegenerative disease are well associated with NMN82 level or SARM1 level. So that brings out it's important in context of several neurodegenerative disorders. Now I have a detailed video on types of nerve injury 
including neuropraxia, axon axonotomesis, and neurotomesis. You can watch that video by clicking on the link which is provided in the description or in the i button. I hope this video was informative and medically relevant. If you like this video, don't forget to follow us on Facebook page or Instagram page. Support our channel using super thanks. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal, or UPI. See you in next video.